Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Now, a while ago, well, only a short while ago, I uploaded a video on uh, my favorite star cluster, M44, the or, or also known as the Beehive Cluster. Well, today I thought I'd share with you my favorite nebula, M57, the Ring Nebula. Now, why polo mint in the sky? Well, apart from the obvious reasons, um, it being a ring, uh, when I very, very first saw it, I can remember it was in a six inch uh, reflector. Not unlike this actually, only, only an inch bigger, <laughs> uh, on a Dobsonium mount. And I just remember the first time I saw it, I just went, that looks so like a polo man. It just, just looked like a polo man. Because of course everything's black and white when you uh, look through a telescope. You, you don't get really get colour. And, uh, or, or uh, a light lifesavers as you call it over the pond don't you <laughs> lifesavers and polo mints uh but yeah it just looked like a, a a polo mint to me and it always and it still does really so whenever i'm showing somebody you know uh, who've never seen the ring nebula before i say look for the polo mint just look for a little polo mint. <laughs> now here's a fantastic uh uh, Hubble uh, image of the Ring Nebula and as you can see I mean that's just fantastic isn't it that, to think there's something like that just above you in the sky well not always above you it will be uh, in the summer though it'll be almost directly above and this is the good thing about this one is even though it's pretty low down it's not too low down uh, at the minute but it's it will rise as the months go on it'll rise up I'll tell you exactly how to find it in a minute um, but when you look through it through the telescope it's going to be more like this okay and uh you know and, and don't be put off by that because what you're seeing it, it's fantastic through an eyepiece um because it really stands out from anything else that you may have already seen like it's so different from uh, like the uh, like the moon or the planets or any other deep sky objects that generally just look like <laughs> use the little faint fuzzy patch in the eyepiece where this is this distinctive little ring it just looks so weird up there you know almost surreal or supernatural or whatever you want to call it it just looks very odd um, but even though it is tiny in the eyepiece this thing is huge okay we're talking about 2.6 light years across so it's a fair old size and uh, what actually caused what it actually is is in, in the center of the ring there is a star but um, unfortunately, it's a dying star, okay? Uh, and it's what they call a star burst. It's when a star die, or when a star is dying. What it does is it expels um, ionized gas, which just goes into outer space, if you like, that causes this ring. Um, and eventually, I mean, the ring nebula isn't going to be around forever, okay? Because of obviously, when the star uh, burns itself out it'll turn into a white dwarf and eventually uh, the, the the gas cloud will uh, go away but that's it's quite a way off yeah a few thousand years so don't worry you've still got plenty of time to see it so how do we find m57 the ring nebula well you'll be pleased to know it's probably one of the easiest deep sky objects to find what you want to be doing is after sunset look south southeast okay and you want to be looking for a very bright blue star it's probably going to be the brightest thing in that area of the sky and that will be vega okay the dominant star of lyra okay now as you can see lyra apart from vega you've got like a um oh god would you call that shape now when it's that shape a uh, pen pen Pentallelogram? Pentallelogram? Is it a pentallelogram? Something like that. <laughs> like a like a squash square, if you, if you like. Um, and this is what you want to target. It's almost like a twin set of stars. They're almost identical uh, when you look at them visually without optical aid. Now, the bottom two of those stars, you want to be focusing your uh, finder scopes pretty much bang in the centre of those two stars. Okay? Now... Have your lowest power eyepiece, no matter how big your telescope, whether it's a small refractor like this or a, a, a reflector, whatever, okay? Make sure it's your lowest powered eyepiece. Now, at first, you may not see anything, okay? But what you're looking for under low power, 
um, is a kind of, it'll almost look like an out of focus star at first. You'd be, you'd be like, you know, what's the matter with that star? And then you'll realize you're looking at the ring nebula. Now on low power, it's always a good idea to do the averted vision uh, technique. And that's simply, um, if you were to look directly at me, okay, and then hold your hands out uh, at either side of your face and bring them in, but keep looking at me, you can still see your hands, okay? You can still see your hands moving in and out. Well, that's averted vision. So you're not looking, you, you do this in the eyepiece, where not looking directly at the target, just look to one side, but keep the target in your averted vision. And uh, that really does bring out the ring nebula under low power. Now, you can increase power a little bit on this one. Don't go too much with it though, especially if you've only got like a, a five inch telescope or a three inch refractor, something like that, or anything lower. Uh, because of course, the more power you increase, the dimmer the image is going to be. Um, even though uh, the Ring Nebula is, <coughs> excuse me, is not a particularly dim uh, deep sky object, you still want reasonably dark skies. Even though I haven't got like, you know, my, where my skies are, I've got a lot of light pollution and I find it no problem in both of these telescopes under low power. So on the next clear night, I strongly advise you to go out, like I say, look south, southeast. And remember, as the year goes on, as we go into the summer, Lyra gets higher and higher and higher, okay? So it gets easier and easier to view the Ring Nebula. So you've got plenty of time to see it. You've got nearly all year, really. <laughs> for the rest of the year well thank you so much for watching if you've watched this far um, if you haven't subscribed maybe think about subscribing and hit that thumbs up uh, while you're there because it really does help the channel in the meantime go and find yourself a polo in the sky and i will see you on the next one bye for now